The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 29th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. And more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you, 877-927-6648. That's how you call in. And if you can't call in, hey, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. That's at steve at tfnn.com. But inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do, although I'll tell you the private pings are the better ones only because it's easy for me to keep track of what you are requesting out there. But we'll take any ping out there. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, all U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow's off 578 points. That's one and seven tenths percent. The S and P two and three tenths percent, or 100 points even. Steven. Nasdaq down 381, two and eight tenths percent. Russell's down one and three tenths percent, 25. Semis off 86. Tranny's down 238. Gold's up 1750. 1908 80 is what it's printing at. 2306 for silver. That's off 11 cents. Lights recruit 10679. That's up a buck 47. One and a half percent. Natural gas up. Uh, Five and a half percent, basically seven dollars and twenty six cents. That's basically at the top of its daily profile. So take the non resistance and the thirty year treasury off twenty two ticks, one forty seventeen is print. Now lead the charge dollar wise. The upside you get Tesla, twenty two bucks. Asbury Automotive Group up fourteen. Chart Industries twelve. Carlisle Companies eleven and well basically twelve. And Mohawk Industries up uh, about eleven bucks. So the downside Amazon. 383 bucks. That's a 13% move. And prices trading below last year's low. In fact, we're going to start taking a look at Amazon in a moment here. That is a very bearish sign. Booking Holdings is down 64. AutoZone is off 49. Google's down 45. Mercado Libre is off 43. So plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. In fact, let's go straight to Amazon. Then we'll go take a look at the other markets out here. So we'll change screens. We'll go to our eight panel screen. Although I'm going to add a ninth panel to it. And that ninth panel is going to be the yearly chart. So now, oh, you know what I need to do here is before I do that, let me just change a color so that when I do this now for, me, for everything, I think it's aqua. Yeah, perfect. So here I'm going to put up the Amazon, the yearly chart. So it's really kind of a cool, simple tool, not really a technical tool necessarily, uh, but technically speaking. Uh, when an instrument trades above the prior year, it's simply in a bullish mode out there. There's no other way to call it. You call it something. You can call it another way, but there's really no other technical way to call it. Likewise, the exact opposite. When you begin trading below the bottom of profile, which is what took place in essence uh, overnight and this morning, with price then gapping down and getting below the bottom of that. Uh, by the way, the yearly number uh, out here yesterday's yearly low. Yesterday's last year's yearly low, 2881. And Amazon, um, the day before, where did Amazon close at? I believe it was just above that. So, yeah, the uh, close last night was at uh, 2903. But we're below that now. So that is a bearish message. So that's important just to understand. You've got that nice TD9 count top out there. Although it says price get back to 245.75, that's not what I'm saying, although that is a possibility. But there's a lot of breakout levels that price would have to get through to get there. Now, if we look at the monthly chart, you're below the bottom of a bullish structured monthly chart. 
a real potential level is 1626.03. If we look at a weekly time frame chart, let's just uh, spread this out here. No bottom signals. The next level of support for Amazon is at 23.30, and that's its TD9 count breakout level. Bust through that level, and there's an A to B equals CD to the downside, by the way, on a monthly time frame that is setting up. Now, I don't know if we've got the monthly. I'm going to look at a different page here. So if you give me a moment, curious what the monthly volume is since we're at the end of the month for Amazon. So Amazon is going to do volume of, well, I can't tell you what it's going to do volume of. I can tell you where we're at right now, which is 67 million shares. And the swing point, well, I was looking at the weekly basis, yeah. So on a weekly basis, the volume is 24.6 million shares. And the swing point in essence that is taking out for the A to B, Equal CD to the downside at volume of 23. So you're already over that. So you have a confirmed weekly A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, although I can't draw that in here, I've got it drawn on my other screen. The one to one level is 2325. And you've got 2330 as your next level of support. So that's going to be a real key area to watch. Now, if price bust through that level, then the next A to B equals CD, that would be the 1.272 expansion would take us to about 2029. And below that would be 1764. And you've got 1812 as another breakout area. So Amazon on the weekly base has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. If we look at the short term time frame charts out here, I'm not seeing any even attempts at a bounce as we speak right now. So uh, yeah, things do not look good for the amazing one. And that is Amazon. Let's go to um, let's go take a look at the general markets. In fact, let's do this by taking a look at. You know what we're going to do? We're going to change up. We're going to change up. We're going to take a look at the index ETFs. Is that uh, most of you that have charting applications out there? You're, you're able to pull that information up. So let's go take a look at the index ETFs. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me go back here. Shoot, screen. Yeah, we're going to go back to our main screen here. Are we going to go to the index ETFs? And the reason why I want to do this is because we have new profiles that have formed. So we have new profiles that did confirm yesterday or last night inside the equity future contract. We also have new profiles, and these are solid here for the equity for the index ETFs. So in the case of the spies, as an example, the bottom of its profile is at uh, 41851. We're trading at 41786 right now. So it's a level that is being tested. The Qs are testing support. The bottom of its profile is 318.29. Price is trading out of 318.59. If we take a look at the Dow Diamonds, the bottom of its profile is at 333.46. We're trading at 333.61. Now, the IWM has not gotten back to the bottom of its profile, which is at 186.72. It's low so far today is 187.37. But in essence, we have all four index ETFs that are pulling back to the support levels of new profiles. Now, these are important because if price closes below that, well, it says we head to lower areas. Now, the lower areas would be dependent upon which instrument we're looking at. So, for example, lower area for the SPY would be the February 24th swing point low. In the case of the Qs, well, the question would be, what's it doing with regard to the swing point that has volume of 79 million shares? That swing point from March the 14th. You're pulling back today with light volume, 46 million shares. In fact, all of these are lighter volume than the last time that price was down here, at least as of 1.14 in the afternoon. So the question is, will these support levels hold? So we get back from this break. How about we do this? We switch from this set of charts. We go take a look at our eight panel set of charts for the in the, for the uh, equity future contract. See if there's any kind of symbols, any kind of signals out there. Not symbols, but signals. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters 
letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, let's do this here. Um, let me just make sure of one thing. If you give me just a moment. Sorry about that. Yeah, so let me uh, do uh, one thing here. And then I, mean, I started a set of charts here in anticipation of a call. So just got to let these populate. These are the corn charts out here. They've got the wrong. I've got to update the uh, the correct month on that. But uh, in, in a moment, I'm just simply trying to get over to my ES mini charts out here. So it should let me over there in just a moment. And let's see if we can get there right now. Okay, perfect. So we take a look at the ES mini. Here's what we know as of this moment first the month is going to come to an end we're still below that oscillator and change line so it does leave open the potential that price would move to 37 20 50. in order for that to happen we need to see a close below 41 26 75. that is its td9 count breakout level uh, for the uh, weekly time frame. So a close below that would then open up that possibility of that 37 20 level but before any of that can happen price is going to need to close below the bottom of its new daily profile. Again, on the ES Mini, that's at 41.74. So that's a level of support. Now, when we look at the intraday charts <coughs> to see if there's any kind of bottom signals, the answer is, or bottom patterns, signals, patterns, <coughs> the answer is there is not. With one exception, you can clearly see or I think you can clearly see, an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern inside the 30-minute chart out here. So there's your A to B, and then your C to D is going to be an expansion of the one-to-one -one level. Well, we're at 120. In the next nine and a half minutes, if we get a bullish reversal candle, then with the ES mini getting back to daily support, the 30-minute will have a confirmed by the D point. Now, what that would then suggest is a move up into the 42.15 level out there. And if price can get above that, then you could see a rally into 42.46. So that's what we're taking a look at when we take a look at the ES mini. We do have a call around the line. It is John in Philly. So let's go out to John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing very well. Uh, Steve, I thought I would ask you today about the corn market. We haven't, we have not spoken about corn beans, corner beans in, in a couple of months. 
Uh, we've spoken uh, repeatedly about wheat, but of course we all know there's major bull markets going on. Uh, past two months, of course, driven by uh, supplies coming out of the Ukraine being cut off as uh, as a result of the war. But uh, we've we've got a major bull market in progress. Uh, I keep asking the question, is there potential for a high? And just to share with you and your listeners, uh, in the corn markets, uh, each and every week, despite dips, higher highs continue to be made. What is going on here is there's adverse weather in Brazil. Mm -hmm. There are now planting delays in the United States as, uh, as a result of too wet and too cold conditions, especially throughout the northern corn belt. And as a consequence, we have end-user panic buying. I mean, each and every day we see export uh, demand uh, announced. So uh, buyers are very afraid that <clears throat> growing conditions in the United States this summer will be poor and that corn at seven and a half, eight dollars come July or August will look cheap. So they're buying now, despite it being at new highs. So that's the story. What I will share with you, I've seen this type of thing before, the panic buying into the start of planting season. Of course, okay. I, I've got no war uh, analog to, uh, to study, but panic buying into mid to late May has in the past created tops right during planting season. Okay. That leads to declines in the harvest season. So, as we look at spot corn, either your synthetic contract, the July contract, or the new crop dease contract, could you share your chart work and the numbers that come up that will give us things to hang our hats on as we look for price or pattern that could indicate highs? Absolutely. So, John, we're taking a look at. So, th thanks for laying all that out. And we're specifically looking here at the uh, at the uh, July contract. That's the panel on your left, and then the December contract, which is panel number two from your from your right out here. So, what both of those are showing right now, really, all the contracts that I have out here, prices trading above resistance as we speak right now, which is the top of their daily profile. So, in the case of the July contract, that's eight fourteen. In the case of the uh, Jan, uh, the December contract, that's 755. We're just slightly above that right now. But trading above resistance would suggest higher price. Now, it's not shown on these charts here, John, but it's on the white background charts, and I can show those to you momentarily. But you probably already know this, and that is on the December contract, at least what I have is I've got wave number seven that we're at. So your idea that there's a potential top, well, we know that at wave number seven, which in order for that to confirm, folks, you have to have a lower high. So the soonest that that pattern could confirm would be on Monday. And if we get a higher high on Monday, then it would be Tuesday and so forth. But that can be a topping signal. But at this stage here, price is also just above the top of its daily profile. So if price continues to rise and we do get a confirmed seventh wave move, then the first level of support would be old resistance at the 755 level, or in the case of the July contract, the 814 area. There's also roads momentum indicator signals that have been triggered. Now, in the case of the July contract, we're only in wave number six. So July has six and December has uh, seven wave number uh, G out there, but both July and December have roads momentum indicator signals, meaning that prices move higher with less relative energy. And should a bearish reversal candle occur, then that would be a signal of a top as well. Now, what we would have to do depends upon where price is at at that stage. Is price above the profile levels? If it is, and we get a topping signal, then my work would suggest that that's only a neutral signal. Price would have to at least get back inside the profile, John, to say, okay, now we've got some potential action to the downside. In the case of the July contract, that first potential action could find support at 796.30. And in the December contract, that'd be $7.34, $7.34.70 out there. So those would be those areas. Now, if price gets below that, then we're looking at a move in July to 761.20 and in December to 714.00. 60 out there. Any questions so far about the information that I've shared with you or the, what the black background charts are sharing with us? Good. Uh, so far, so good. 
Okay, so when I take a look at it, I'm going to change over to another set of screens out here. And I realize right now what I don't have, this is not set up. This is, this is really more for if I were trading the ETF, I was having subscribers trade the ETF out here. So uh, here you can see July and December, and you can see those diagonal lines. You're looking at the upper left. That's the indication of a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. You can see wave number seven, letter G, on the December contract, and wave number six. Uh, the uh, looks like I also have a seven there, so I'm going to see where that count is coming from. Yeah, we're going to go. With, we're going to stick with seven as the uh, current count out here. Um, on a 30-minute time frame chart, just looking at a short-term time frame chart for July or for December contract, I don't have any kind of a topping signal out here at all. Don't know if we would have them on a 60-minute or something along those lines, but that's what the charts are are, are telling us. Uh, we're going to a break. If you'd like to hold on and you have some further questions and other information I can uh, find for you, that'd be cool. Uh, and if not, then I want you to have a fantastic Friday. So the, the choice uh, thanks, is yours, Joe. Thanks very much. I will uh, close it off now. I appreciate your help, sir. Sounds great. Take care. Good to talk to you. That was John in Philly. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the art of timing the trade charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The art of timing the trade charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the uh, next question comes from JT in New York. JT writes in, he says, hey, Steve, hey, JT, did Verizon, VZ is a ticker symbol, did Verizon bottom yet? At what price would you buy in? Man, when I take a look, now you've got the black background charts up on our screen. So we know we're below the daily, weekly, and the monthly. And this has just been one waterfall move to the downside. Uh, quite frankly, ever since, I, I assume they released earnings or something on uh, April 22nd. I don't know that to be the case, but look at that waterfall slide to the downside. So is there a bottom? I mean, even if there is, I don't know that you could get me to step in front of this train to the downside. Now, on a monthly basis, 
here. Um, what is price coming into? So it's trading into already a swing point from August of 2015. That swing point had volume of 328 million. You're at 530 million right now. So do you realize that, that what that says is that when you move into a swing point with volume, oftentimes what you do is you go test the bottom. The bottom of that swing point is 3806. 3806, we were at 62 bucks um, back in the uh, 2019 uh, time frame out here. Now let's go look at the white background charts, see if there's anything else out here that shows maybe some kind of relief of some sort. But right now, Verizon does not look like a uh, excellent stock to uh, purchase. So on a monthly basis, we sort of covered that. What we didn't cover is where's the next TD9 count breakout area. So where, where Verizon should head to, it's got a confirmed Roachman to indicator top, is the 4379 level. Well, that's coming from the monthly chart. The weekly chart says what? It's a great question. I don't know what it says just yet. I have to actually get more data. Now, price is below a breakout level of 47.13 um, with that wide ranging bar. So that just suggests that we're headed lower. No reason for me to do much work here. I mean, if I just answer the question, the, the answer to the question is no. Has Verizon, and basically, I'm going to paraphrase. So this is not the exact question. Well, when JT was asking, has it bottomed yet? His specific question was, do the tools that I use to identify bottoms, do they, are they shown anywhere? And the answer there is no. In fact, here is a TD9 count bottom that worked. This was from back in March of 2022. And then once price got through that, this was, not only did it get through that, it got through a breakout level of 1582. And this was the uh, April 25th timeframe. You know, that was a signal to get out of Dodge out here. So you're only in bar number six. Maybe this forms some type of TD9 count and get some type of relief rally in, in the middle of next week. But uh, we don't have that kind of signal as we speak right now. You have a negated signal on the 195 minute chart, a negated TD9 count bottom. That says lower price, bar number eight on the 130. So you could form by Sunday some type of um, some type of uh, TD9 count bottom to get some type of relief rally. But otherwise, the intraday charts they look sick, just as the stock does. And so JT, I think you got to go fishing in some other pond because this one does not look good out there. So don't know what else going on. Oh, and Verizon, you know, we talked about Amazon uh, being uh, bearish when you take when you trade below the prior year's low. Well, just look how look how sick uh, Verizon looks on a yearly basis here. Yeah, TD9 count top. That was bar number eight from four years ago that formed that top out here. You know, you're well below the uh, low of last year, the year before that. And this suggests they move potentially to the 3680 level out there. So uh, longer term, you know, if you're looking for a longer term buy, I think you've got to be idle inside of Verizon for, for a bit of time out here. The next question is coming in from uh, Mimi. And uh, Mimi wants to uh, comment on the UNG for going long. So great question out there. Uh, let's do this here. I don't know how quickly my screen will populate, but we're going to give it a shot anyways. And that's we're going to go to the natural gas chart. So, well, while, in fact, while those are populating, does anybody in the audience know which contracts are inside of UNG right now? Does anybody know which future contracts are a part of the UNG? I don't know it off the top of my head. I'm going to go ahead and try to type it in here. UNG. Uh, Holdings and uh, just while the while the chart here is popping, you can see them populating to see if anything comes up. So, I've got something that shows that the May contract represents about forty eight percent. But what represents the other part out there? And that doesn't even make sense to me. So that's got to be old information because we're really trading the June contract. So that's not going to help us. But Mimi, what you've really got to do, and I don't have the time to do it here during the show. I mean, I, I, I'm trying to search for it, but it's just not popping up. But in order to really, uh, yeah, so I show, now I do show that the June contract represents the majority, uh, two-thirds, two-thirds it's, uh, it's still got a bunch of money in U.S. dollars just sitting there, so I don't know what it's getting ready to purchase. And it, uh, in fact, it's got quite a bit in uh, cash out here. Now, when I say that, I'm just looking at this right here. So here is U.S. CF Investments, what uh, is inside the UNG. Uh, pending trades as of today, there are none at this point in time. So it's really the June contract that we'll go ahead and look at out here. And that's what we've got up on our screen. So you want to go ahead and take a long position. And when I take a look at natural gas out here, Trading out at 725. Let me make sure here that uh, natural gas, yeah, 725. What we have is we actually have a sell the D point pattern. 
And that was confirmed with this bearish engulfing candle. And price right now is just consolidating with inside its daily profile. It's a bearish structured profile out here. So Mimi, if you're looking for a place to enter natural gas, the ideal spot, don't know whether it will get there, is at 629 which is the bottom of the profile. It's a possibility as long as price is consolidating with inside here, I wouldn't suggest that you get into it now. Trading up into resistance, which is at 756, and that is the uh, top of a bearish structure profile. So the better trade setup would be if price can get down to 629. So be patient. I'm not saying it'll get there, uh, because we don't. I don't know that to be a fact just yet, but I, I, I don't have a signal here that suggests chasing it either. The 30 minute time frame chart formed a nice road momentum indicator bottom, uh, which we have bounced from. And uh, I don't show any kind of a top. I see an A to B equals CD to the upside, but that hasn't completed out here. Oscillator and change line change color. So price and the oscillator and change line do have a connection with each other. And that might take place at about $7.13 when we take a look at a 30-minute chart out here. No top on the 60-minute, nor on the 120, nor on the 240 nor on the 300 out here. So it's really that daily chart here, Mimi, that has us being cautious. And uh, so I'd say one of two things, either you get some type of nice bottom signal, such as here we got on the 30 minute time frame chart to take, to take some kind of position in it. We don't have that as we speak, but that's what you might want to look for. Or you might want to just really be patient and see if you can get that pullback into the bottom of that daily profile, or at least the prior swing point. That would be the April 25th time frame. And uh, so that's what I would do. So I hope that that helps you out. Now, I didn't take a look at UNG. I, I, I should at least do that for you. So let me get that going on the uh, black background screens out here, because that's going to be the easiest way to get that populated. And I will change uh, over to that screen here. And But it's really going to be understanding what's going on inside the June contract at this stage here. It's going to go ahead. It's going to go ahead and... Uh, add an additional contract out here but right now maybe you can see so from a ung standpoint and this doesn't correlate it, it more likely correlates to the uh, february 22nd low as far as an entry point at about 22 um, 55 but you can see here if we're just looking at this profile it's a bullish structured profile whereas the natural gas contract is a bearish structured profile it's the underlying instrument that's more important for you versus ung but here we'd say an entry point would be 2382 uh, and that's using the daily time frame out there so mimi thanks so much for writing in i hope that that helps you out if you've got any further questions please write back to me and i'll provide you with that information Let's go to Mike in Ormond Beach. Hey, Mike, uh, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Steve, I'm doing great. Steve, I'm wondering about the U.S. dollar. Um, okay. I had a trade going with the UUP. I was in Monday, Tuesday, and I got out Wednesday. And it looks like it made a top yesterday. What's your take? Uh, it definitely uh, formed a TD9 count top. So yesterday was bar number nine of a TD9 count. Well, I hear the music in my ears. So, Mike, if you would be kind enough to hold on and we come sure. back from this break, we'll go ahead and rip apart the U.S. dollar index for you. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're on the phone with Mike in Ormond Beach. We're taking a look at the U.S. dollar index. And uh, so one of the things that we know here, Mike, is that price made it back. It did 100 percent move of a move, got back to okay. a prior swing point area. We're showing that on the weekly time frame out there. That was at the 103.56 level. So one, not a surprise that price has stalled. But on the daily time frame out here, it doesn't show in the black background chart. It will momentarily. You've got a TD nine count top. Now, we can see here as prices above all profile levels. So the signal at this stage here is somewhat neutral, but still suggests that price is likely to pull back. Now, we're going to switch. Any, any questions about this set of charts here before I move over to the white background charts for you? Well, I can't, I, I can't really see. I'm in a parking lot right now. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. But, uh, all right. Okay. So I mean, you'll I be able to. Another, do you think, I mean, do you think we could just pull back slightly and then run up and hit that 103.95, that previous high from years ago? Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's an A to B equals CD pattern. It takes up to 109.47. And I think okay. we've, 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 we have really just gotten started on the U.S. dollar index continuing to move higher. But, you know, let's just take a look at it, what the signals are today. So. Okay. On this set of charts here, the very right-hand panel is the U.S. dollar index. And you can see it's got a nice TD9 count pattern out here. And because we have a valid topping signal, what price should do is pull back to its oscillator and change line. And that currently, Mike, is priced at 102.29. What you and I don't know is whether or not that will hold as support. We can see that, uh, quite frankly, for the last um, two or three weeks out here, every time price has pulled back, it has found support at that green oscillator and change line, telling us about still strong momentum to the upside. So could it just pull? And if it does find support there, then I guess that answers your question that, yeah, price should then move higher. Now, it would still so the signal right now is neutral and it will remain neutral unless price closes below that green oscillator and change line. Closing below a green oscillator and change line tells us to expect or anticipate a further retracement out there. So but first things first, price should go target that green oscillator and change line. Now, the elements that impact the U.S. dollar index are these six currency pairs, the euro, which is the strongest. Now, the euro could confirm a buy the D point pattern today. It's got a bull sash right now. So let's assume that it's going to maintain this bullish reversal candle. And here what we should see is the euro move up to 106. Now, if the euro, uh, so are you taking a trade on this or what, what, or you're more thinking the long position? Well, what, it, well, what I was, Steve, I was long the UUP, but I did get out Wednesday. Great. And also I'm keeping my eye on the dollar because I, you know, I, I like trading some of the steel stocks also. And, you know, with the dollar okay. high, they're getting clobbered. So, 
Okay, okay. So in the case of the euro, because it's about 57%, I believe, of the weighting of the U.S. dollar index, if the euro closes above its oscillator and change line, which is red, 1.06, then you're going to expect that the U.S. dollar index will fall even further. Now, it still has these other five currencies to contend with, the yen being the next currency. I believe that's about 14% of the U.S. dollar index. Now, it has a Rhodesman indicator signal. But so far, no bearish reversal candle. And price really just tests that green oscillator and change line. So if it did generate a bearish reversal candle, then price would go target its most recent swing point from just a couple of days ago. And if we were to get below that, that being 127.02, then you can see a move back to 122.37. Now, in this chart here, folks, when the yen is pulling back, it's getting stronger. So that would then say that the U.S. dollar index would get weaker. So the euro is saying I might have a bottom. The U.S. Japanese yen is saying I might have a top. And we're going to get a bottom, a TD9 count bottom, inside the uh, Great British Pound out here. Bar number eight was yesterday. Today's going to be bar number nine. Um, and so this would suggest that the pound should move up to 127. So just those three currency pairs alone suggest that the U.S. dollar index is going to pull back further. Mike, any question? Well, I, 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 sorry. I, I, I know you don't have any questions about these charts because you can't see them because you're in a parking lot out there. But <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, I'll, I'll you won't watch be able the archive, to... of course, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll just real, th I'll throw up here the eight panel chart for the U.S. dollar index, just looking for any kind of signals out here to suggest that maybe there's going to be some type of uh, rally as we speak. And, and I just don't see it. Well, I take this back. So this is pretty cool. It is the... Um, it's the 60-minute chart that actually formed a nice TD9 count bottom. Price is attacking that swing point right now. So a confirmation <laughs> that you're going to get lower price is if we get a close below the low of that pattern, and that on a 60-minute basis was at 102.81. We're trading at 102.93. So if you see a close below 102.81, it doesn't have to be today. That's going to be your confirmation that the U.S. dollar index is going to head lower. That next lower area would be 102.29 or possibly uh, 101.88. But the answer is it does look like the U.S. dollar index wants to move lower, and I think we've got all the particulars to uh, keep our eyes on. The most important thing would really be the euro as it approaches that red oscillator and change line out there. So, Mike, are there any other questions, anything else that I can help you with? No, that's pretty much it, Steve. Uh, like I said, I did have a couple-day trade going with the UUP, and, um, you know, when, you know, I... I do trade, you know, a lot of the steel stocks when, you know, the dollar is moving down and they're they're moving up and everything. So I was just wondering, you know, what your take on it was, which you told, you know, you gave us all the parameters. So I'll just watch and, you know, take it step by step. Perfect. So what we have to realize here is, um, you know, Europe is in a world of hurt and there is global capital. Most most certainly the euro um, is is moving, uh, you know, into the U.S. out here. And that's that's just going to continue. So what we've got right now is just maybe maybe a little bit of a counter trend, a move out here. But longer term, things do not look good for the euro out there. So, Mike, hey, thanks for calling. Always good to speak to you. Have a, a fantastic weekend and we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. Always, Steve, and thanks again so much for all the education you give us. You, you, tell, you teach us a lot of great things. I can't thank you enough Perfect. for it. Well, our, my pleasure, and thanks you, thank you for being here to even give us the opportunity to do that. So that's Mike in uh, Ormond Beach. Let's go to our next request out here, which is from uh, Peter in uh, Park City. That's a beautiful place. And uh, Peter, want to take a look at the 30-year Treasury. So, Pete. Uh, price is back at a potential support level, and that's the bottom of its quarterly profile, and that's at the uh, 138.22 mark. So that's a positive. The negative is you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to downside on the monthly chart that suggests that what the 30-year uh, treasure wants to do is get down to the 131.22 level. I would argue it wants to get below that, and below that would get us to 121.71. Now, that's over time. There is a brand new weekly profile that is attempting to form. I will not have confirmation on this, Pete, until this, uh, Sunday evening. Uh, but right now, price is trading right at the bottom of that profile, or very close to 140.18. We're at 140.16. So if price can hold 140.18, you've got a bottom potentially on the week, a, a, a support level. Not a bottom, but a support level on the uh, weekly and a support level on the quarterly.
quarterly, and that would be helpful because price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. So I believe that. So the real key number, though, to be watching is going to be that 138.22. Now, the daily time frame has a buy the D point. This was this nice uh, key reversal bar bullish engulfing session that took place on April 1st. But all price did was was bounced up into the profile. Looked like it was going to be able to make its move to the center. That's the point of control where both buyers and sellers believe there was fair value. Was unable to do that. And again, you're back below the bottom of that profile. So it's really not clear to Stevie at this stage. Well, it's, it tells us it wants to test that April 20th level. And if price closes underneath 141.13, we're at 146.16, price should at least go test the bottom of that uh, swing point. So I hope that helps you out. You don't see the chart? Son of a gun. I did it again. I'm going to put those charts up on our screen here. And uh, Peter, write in if you've got questions about what I shared with you or what these charts are communicating. Uh, let's just try to take care of during a breakout here. My apology for not showing those 30 year treasury trades. Here they are. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we've got two questions that we need to uh, get to here to uh, end the show. Uh, this one is coming in from uh, David in Tomball, Texas. Wants us to take a look at ticker symbol AEP. So we got those screens uh, fired up on our eight panel charts out here. And the question is... On a monthly chart, is a candle in the month an inverted hammer? Does this type of candle suggest a, a third test of the high of 104.79 or suggest something else? Well, let's look at the monthly chart out here. And no, I've just got it really as a spinning top as we speak right now. So not a, not a, uh, not any kind of, uh, 
candle that you're referring to. Price is just testing an old level of resistance. That was wave number seven, letter G. It was a bearish engulfing candle up there. So, so far, the resistance level for AEP, and that took us back into the February 2020 timeframe, has held. Not seeing a top, just simply trading back, making that 100% move of a move. No topping signal on the weekly chart, just price pulling back and testing support. A new profile on a weekly basis formed out here. So if it can hold this 98.26, that is a uh, bullish signal out here. The daily time frame just shows sideways movement with price consolidating for the most part with inside its profile. It's a new profile that formed. 98.73 is support, resistance 102.98 out there. Um, I'm not seeing anything else, but to answer your question specifically on the monthly chart, is it suggested? suggesting anything only suggesting that price got back to a prior level of support we're not seeing any kind of topping signal on the weekly or daily so it looks like it might want to make another run for that area so david i hope that helps you out and thanks so much for taking the time to write in we're going to finish out the show uh by uh, taking a look at the smhs for nicholas and uh, nicholas says he forgot to say i'm looking to buy these semis out here soxl so what we're going to do is uh, get over here Make sure we're on the right screen. Yep, there we are. Okay, so here's the daily time frame for the semiconductor index. And, you know, what I don't have is a bottoming pattern. Yeah, I don't really don't really have a bot and prices. So look, if you want to buy the SMHs, then buy it at the bottom of its. Uh, and this is applies to SOXL, but use the SMH is the one time use the SMH for the signal. Go ahead and buy SOXL if you want. Wait for price to pull back to support, which will be the bottom of its new profile. And that would be at 228.55. That's coming from the daily time frame out there. Uh, oh, I see. I've got the other. Let me see. What else do we have? Yearly. Where are we at on yearly? Not yearly, so still okay. Weekly chart out here. What do we have there? Yeah, not much. Not much. So, Nicholas, I hope that helps you out. Folks, thanks so much. It's been a great week. Thanks so much for joining me. Stay tuned. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Take care.